Hello, my name is Balin Fieldson. I'm a software developer who builds virtual reality and augmented reality, mixed reality, uh, those sorts of applications. Um, I uh, am here to talk about how to build your own personal full dome game. Um, you can check out mine at www.cosmicorbiters.com. Download it today if you have a dome. It's a fun game. Your attendees will love to play with their smartphones. Um, we're going to be building our flight, full dome flight simulator using Unity. Um, I'm using the latest version, which is 2017 uh, patch 1 right now. Uh, the ideas that I'm covering in this, or at least planning on covering, are um, really basic game construction techniques. We're going to learn about importing packages. Um, we're going to learn about assets from leak packages. We're going to learn about terrain sculpting, uh, basic water shader, particle systems, flight vehicles, different set up for joysticks, respawn techniques, collision handling, and uh, broadcasting render textures uh, from cameras. Um, I personally love to code, uh, but I know that's not how much students feel about it. Um, so uh, this tutorial doesn't require that you know how to code. Um, you will need a copy of Go Master Tools by Charles Wilson, um, Spout Framework for Windows, and Spout for Unity. Um, these tools will be used to get your video game content into multiple projectors that make up the Go. Um, and so, uh, yeah. I'm going to show you how to build this. Um, first off, you're going to want to download everything that's in the list. Um, and uh, then then that's uh, going to be in this uh, collection of downloads that, that you had. Um, you'll want to take Spout for Unity Master here um, and extract it and get this folder. Open that up and uh, you have inside a Unity Spout demo. Um, copy that folder. I just used Control C to do that. Um, and then go to wherever it is that you store your thing. Uh, you, you like to store stuff for, that you work on, your documents directory, that sort of thing works great. Um, and then paste that in there. Um, and then change that name over to Dome Flyer. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, if you already have Dome Flyer in there, you can call it something else like Dome Flyer 2. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, go ahead and um, go into Unity, uh, launch Unity. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this one um, and start up Unity by launching Unity 2017. Um, and then we're going to open an existing project. I'm looking at documents. There's our Dome Flyer 2 project. And I'm going to select that folder. Uh, it's going to warn us about the Unity version. Don't worry about that. We're perfectly fine. Um, if you don't have Unity installed, you're going to have to install Unity to do all of this. Um, you don't actually have to have Spout to uh, make a game. Just to get it out onto all of the full domes, you'll want to include that. Um, so uh, Unity is going to import all of the components of the existing package um, and then actually show you the uh, interface with a little bit of luck. There we go. Hey! And um, and there's nothing really in here except for the ability to send Spout out. Um, so we're going to start importing packages that we're going to use. So right click over here in your project view under assets and go to import package and get environment. We're going to get environment, import, it's just making sure, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and we're going to get, once it's done with environment, environment's going to include our trees and lots of our uh, textures that we're going to use, um, support for the um, terrain, basically. Uh, now we have it. Okay, now we're going to import another package, and this time it's going to be Particle Systems. And 
then we need to import vehicles. Okay, and next up is Dome Master. That's the component that actually makes things into the fisheye uh, fish view um, that, may, that makes it look good on the dome. Um, if you don't really intend on making a dome game and just want to use a regular camera or you're going to make this into a VR game, you don't need to include all of these Dome Master and Spout. But I would recommend putting them in there anyway because it doesn't really cost you anything and it helps your game show up in new areas. Um, so uh, the next component is Dome Master. And that is a slightly different process. It's a custom package and we need to look in the um, folder wherever it is that you have your components um, and in here is master package and import okay so we have some things and we can start putting them into the scene so go into your environment uh, look under water basic over here and um, under prefabs, you're going to find water basic daytime. Drop that onto your scene. Hooray! Um, and then we have the water, so we're going to make that bigger. 50,000 bigger. Um, and then um, we want a plane. Oh, we can add it that way, though. Instead, we right click on it up here, put a 3D object, and plane. And um, the only thing that we want the plane for um, is to collide with things. We don't want it to show up. So we're going to remove the render component from that. Okay. Let's go over to scene view too, so that things make sense. Um, now, let's go ahead and add a terrain to the scene. Um, 3D object, terrain. Okay, uh, this terrain is what's going to hold. Zoom out a little bit and get to a good three-quarter perspective. Um, we need to sculpt this terrain with islands um, that are going to show up in our game. Um, so I'm going to be really cheaty about that and um, get this kind of island shaped thing. And Okay, and now we've got some mountains and uh, some some terrain there. Let's go ahead and add some textures to this to uh, work with. Um, the first texture we're going to add is going to be grass, so that everything gets covered in grass. Um, and uh, I recommend this grass hill albedo. Um, and I always change the size on these up to 500 for situations like this. Um, it keeps them from looking really silly. Okay, so we've got grass on the scene. Um, and let's go ahead and add more textures. Um, sand is a good one. And again, 500, 500, not 5,000, 500. And let's say um, there's a mud one. And make sure you get the mud spec or mud normals on the normal selection. Oh, oh, we just missed uh, 
Oh, I just missed the 15 there. Didn't change it to 500. Okay. And there's one called Cliff. It's got a normal two, and okay. So we are set up with a whole bunch of uh, textures to work with here, um, and we've got a really big brush size right now. Let's drop that down, and uh, we'll leave these at fifty-five, um, and change this brush over. And these mountains can be colored like stone. Now, this is your opportunity to build um, the game really the way that you want um, and make it look really cool. Uh, like, you can add as much or as little detail as you want here. Um, and you can go and find yourself a bunch of textures to use uh, to fill up your terrain with really, really neat looking stuff. Um, uh, there's a site called cgtextures.com that I use to find uh, generic textures for things. Um, it's got tiled textures that you can uh, bring into your project and then use in the same way that we use the textures here. Um, and that'll keep your, your game from having a generic uh, kind of look. Um, But uh, we're not so worried about that right now. We're more worried about just learning how to uh, build these things, right? So, um, let's see. Uh, you know, there's another grassy one that's built in. Let's go ahead and add that. Oh, no, uh, not like that. Add texture. It's like grassy rock. Now we're cooking with grassy rock. <laughs> I doubt anybody's going to catch on to my new saying. Um, okay, so we've got all these textures painted onto these mountains. Um, they're looking good. And uh, let's change this Y um, uh, position on the mountains uh, down to neg six, or yeah, the terrain itself. Uh, to neg, oh, oh, that's scale. No, no, no. Uh, we want the, to just leave that at one. We're going to change the position in this case by neg, down to neg six. That uh, actually makes all of our islands into islands. Um, and then over here on the size uh, slider, we're going to change the width uh, from 500. We're going to have two more zeros, make it into 50,000. And then do the same thing with the neg. Um, the terrain height should be 1500 and uh, make sure you tab out of the area before you uh, click on anything else otherwise it doesn't really save any of the uh, changes that you make that way oh um, <laughs> oops this should be 20,000 and this should be 20,000 Okay, so here's our terrain. Um, it's uh, pretty well flattened out. Um, so you uh, might want to add more uh, effect to it um, uh, with the, the tools, which still work. Um, I didn't make my mountains very tall, but there we go. And then we got a little bit more. And um, I've just been using one tool, but there's all sorts of things you can throw out in here. Um, and uh, it 
look pretty neat when you uh, when you actually come down to it. Um, okay, so there's a whole bunch of terrain, and we need to add some trees. Uh, so edit the tree list, add tree um, in the tree list. There's uh, broadleaf mobile. Add that. Um, what else do we have? We've got this uh, conifer desktop. We'll add some of those. And there's also there's like a palm tree. Yeah, we'll add that. Okay, because um, you know we've got this star right here. We've got to cover that with palm trees, right? So um, here we go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there we go. We got a bunch of trees on there, um, and put some out on here. Make a much larger brush. Drop the density way down. Okay, getting some trees up on here. Um, I'm sure you get the idea. You can add as many or as little trees as you want. Um, they are going to suck up some processing power. Um, and uh, yeah, basically you'll uh, end up looking for some way to make it easier to draw the things that you want to draw and there's going to be lots of things you can do with these textures uh, to, to help out um, that are even better than trees. Um, wow, hey, look at that texture. What did I do? Did I leave one all low res? Yes, I did. Would have been a pity because this one was really good at the at the higher res. And back over to trees. Okay. Uh, not very many places to land around here. Um, I think we can make a nice flat spot. Okay, now I got a nice artificial land, takeoff and landing. Huge plane right there, the area to, to, to land it. Okay, so um, we got this all set up. Let's save. Um, and the scene is going to be want, want to be known as um, Dome Flyer. And so now that we have. Uh, some trees and area, we're going to now add some clouds. So that's here in effects particle system. And it's supposed to be in the very root. So if it isn't in the root, then move it like that. Reset it. Set the Y to 1000. Um, and then the duration to 1000. Um, leave it on looping. Put it on pre-warm. Lifetime 1000, start speed of zero. Oh, I need a 10,000 lifetime. That actually wouldn't be a problem. Um, and then the start size is going to be random between two constants, which are 200 and 2000. Um, and then 
for your start rotation, it's going to be random between two. Uh, no, no, no. For randomized rotation, 3D start rotation. There we go. We need 3D start rotation. And then it's random between two constants, and then we set this for 360. So that, that rotates its Z. And um, then we go for the start color of random between two colors. Um, set this one for light gray. And it's all local. Max particles are 1,000. Put the emission up to, ten, uh, to 1,000. Um, and the shape over to a box. Um, the box's scale is going to be 100,000. 100,000! Oh hey! 100,000! And uh, it's going to be 100. Um, and then we're going to change the renderer. Um, instead of the default particle, we're going to use mobile steam, yeah, particle steam mobile. And uh, it gives us these clouds all over the scene, um, which that's great. Now you should save your game. And now we're going to go ahead and add an airplane. Um, this is in your standard assets under vehicles, under aircraft. And you'll find prefabs this propeller into the aircraft propeller into the scene um, and you can double click on it and it'll take you right over to it um, and let's see this thing needs an audio listener brilliant idea about moving the console over things it was not so brilliant. Okay, um, and then now that I've got the audio listener, I'm going to go ahead and elevate the airplane to 500 for its flying start. Um, and I'm going to hit F to focus on the airplane when my mouse is over that. Okay. We need to fix the airplane's uh, propellers because otherwise they're going to look silly while they're operating. Um, it has these two blur texture areas that um, are only partially filled. So um, under the textures here in vehicles, um, grab this blur one gray albedo and put it onto your first texture. And the second one apply to the second and the third apply to the third. Um, and repeat the process. Oop, oop, almost grabbed the white one there. Okay, so now we've got gray propellers. Those are going to look great. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, hey, yeah. We're going to want to make this thing explosive. Um, that will keep our landings really gentle, right, guys? <laughs> um, and I'm going to put a 10 times multiplier on that. Uh, with a one second delay and it'll reset on account of the thing um, having a uh, object resetter script already attached to it. Um, so we also want to add an explosion to that and there here in particle system prefabs is a perfectly functional explosion so we'll drop that in there. Um, it's missing any audio but um, you can always uh, make your own prefab with an explosion with audio. Uh, I'll show you how to do that sort of thing in another tutorial if you uh, are not familiar. Um, so now that we have the explosion on here, this is set. We're going to save this uh, propeller aircraft um, and um, change the lighting. So go to Window, Lighting, Settings, and um, let's add some fog, and the color of the fog should be more white than gray. Um, and instead of being exponential squared, we're going to make it linear. 
and we're going to start this up at 8,000 and it ends at 10,000. Okay, uh, that'll look great. Okay, and now we're going to see how this game's going to look in regular modes. We're going to drag this main camera onto the aircraft um, and then uh, set its uh, location here to slightly above and behind the aircraft. Um, and we're going to increase the field of view to 90. Um, and this is going to get another zero to 10,000 so that it actually can see. Um, let's see, so if you're not interested in full dome stuff, save your game. Um, here we go. Let's start. up and you start over again. Okay, we didn't do a flying start though. We'll see what went wrong. Okay, um, now I'm going to uncheck this camera. Uh, uh, I'm going to disable the whole camera itself because we're not going to be using it in this dome game. Save again. Um, I'm going to add a new render texture to the project. So. Ahead, click on assets, then create render texture, and we're going to call this spout out. Um, depending on your intention, uh, you might use different resolutions, but um, I'm going to use uh, 2048 by 2048. Uh, make sure you tab out of that, otherwise, you end up getting um, into trouble. So, um, that texture is there. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new game object here. We're going to call it Spout. Um, we're going to add Spout to it. Check the is enabled in editor. Um, and then we need to add the Dome Master. That's right here in our assets because we imported it earlier. It's under camera camera rigs, and there's two of them in 180 degrees here. There's the dome camera and the dome master. Grab both and put them in your scene. And then take the dome camera, put it onto the aircraft propeller, and reset it. And then set it to a rotation of 75 degrees, x of 0, a y of 10 and a Z of negative 20. That gets us right up in there behind the plane. Um, and need to fix all of these cameras so that they have a much longer range. Give them a range of 10,000. Okay, oh, we're almost there. Um, and now we're going to open up this dome master that we added earlier and duplicate the camera that's in there and rename it to spout spout cam and this gets spout sender added to it we're going to rename this dome flyer and um, we got to choose a texture and that's going to be spout out texture we made earlier. And up here, under target texture for the camera, we also have to set that to spout out. So now both of them are set for spout out. Um, this needs one further component, which is the camera inverter. Otherwise, things are going to be um, reversed in your output, which people are using spout usually have no problem changing, but let's not send it uh, inverted anyway. Oh boy, you know what's coming next? You get to save your game. Okay, um, Unity comes with 
basic joystick controls already configured, and the mouse and keyboard can be used to control the plane the way that we have this already. You can just go and do it. But you might want to add secondary joystick input if you have a dual stick controller, like those made by Microsoft for the Xbox. Um, and uh, multiple Xbox controllers can be added to a Unity game, uh, and they are remote. If uh, so, pretty awesome. You can do multiplayer games in your dome. Um, if you don't care about joysticks and are going to play with the mouse and keyboard, then go on to the configure step. Um, since the four-axis controller for Flight and Unity uses the mouse X and mouse Y for tracking pitch and roll, we're going to add those to the joystick. Um, so, uh, go ahead and pop open the uh, project settings input. And this, and there's an axis uh, input manager here. Um, find horizontal, and the second horizontal and vertical, um, and duplicate each of them. And then in the second horizontal, uh, refer to it, change its name, over to uh, mouse X, uh, and leave it on joystick axis, and set it for the fourth axis. And then in the second vertical that you made, change this to mouse Y. And you'll want to change the, this to the fifth axis on the joystick. OK. Um, and now you'll want to save your game again. And we're going to need to reconfigure it. Um, you can go to File, uh, Build Settings, or you can do Control-Shift-B and it'll show you this collection of things that are in here. Uh, I'm going to select all of these and delete them by using the delete button and click the add open scenes um, and click on player settings. Um, and this is all from the Spout uh, project that we gathered at the very beginning. Uh, we're going to change it to our own information and uh, you might want to get yourself an icon, all of that good stuff. Um, uh, I don't recommend going full screen default for all of the people who are doing domes. Um, we can leave this visible in the background, allow full screen switch. It's really important to make this possible to run in background just like that. Um, and then Name it something cool. Okay. And you can have pop the capability to build here. Um, I'm going to skip the build uh, because there's no need for that in the video. Uh, we can go straight to playing the game. this tutorial, please like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, send me candy, um, you know, all the, all the various things that you do with people in your life. Um, if uh, you finished it and you can record some video of you playing with whatever you managed to finish, then wow, I would really like to see some of that video. Um, you can post it on the CosmicOrbiters.com uh, website. Um, excuse me.
Facebook group for Cosmic Orbiters, um, uh, or uh, share your experiences even on the Cosmic Orbiters website, which has a blog commenting system available. Um, so, thank you so much for downloading um, all of the things. Um, and also, remember uh, that was Mr. Charles Beasley, the famous Dome Master, while we're here. Um, and uh, thank him too. Anyhow, uh, you all have a very fun time.